I'm Greg Johnston, CEO of Carl Data Solutions, an industrial Internet of Things company that provides big data solutions for monitoring critical infrastructure. Carl Data offers machine learning and predictive analytics features to our cloud-based applications to deliver key asset-saving operational insights from massive amounts of data. Carl Data trades on the CSE symbol CRL and the pink symbol CDTAF. For more details on Carl Data, please visit carlsolutions.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's trip to India, eight days of holiday, half a day of working, was there uh, any international fallout you saw from it? Well, apparently there was a negative reaction uh, to his attempt to dress as if he were from India. And uh, a lot of people thought it was uh, gratuitous pandering and in just a little bit bad taste. Uh, but generally, I think a lot of people are realizing Justin Trudeau is another one of these liberal snowflakes. Uh, and uh, I think there's a giant pushback uh, that's starting against liberalism and political correctness. And I think... Justin will get caught up in it. Well, he also had on his dinner list uh, a terrorist, a man who tried to kill uh, an Indian uh, cabinet minister when he visited here in British Columbia 20 years ago. Oh, that's right. I read, I read about that. That's, that's also kind of tacky. Yeah, I'm sure the Indian government really didn't appreciate it. Uh, I mean, really, his whole agenda just seemed to be photo ops that taxpayers paid for. And uh, the first time, you know, he's in... You know, traditional Indian dress, it's cute, but by, you know, day seven, it's not. Yeah. <clears throat> it was a little case of overkill there. and Yeah, that actually got a lot of ridicule on, on social media. And uh, maybe he did it as a distraction to sort of hide the uh, fact that he didn't really accomplish all that much on this little junket. Well, he wasn't greeted by the Indian prime minister who was famous for his bear hugs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... Right now, we're in a situation where a lot of world leaders are deciding they don't want to meet the other world leaders. Uh, Mexico just canceled the planned meeting between their president and Donald Trump because Donald Trump won't back down over his claim that Mexico is somehow going to pay for this wall. On NAFTA, do you think it's going to be successful? Will Trump rip it up? I think it's already a failure. Uh, I don't know that Trump will rip it up. Unfortunately, since he got elected, uh, he seems to have like milled it in uh, with this globalist uh, vision and conquering the world. And uh, uh, he's going to do whatever he thinks is best for American businesses, but he's already been deeply criticized uh, about that uh, from other countries. Uh, so, yeah, he might just tear it up. Well, he also plans to put huge tariffs on international aluminum and steel. Is that good for America? Because it's going to make it a whole lot more expensive to build things. Well, it, it's going to make these products much more expensive. And the other side of it is that we have lost our, our steel plants and aluminum plants. These are just rusting hulk buildings. Uh, it's going to take time to build a new steel mill. Uh, and, again, back in the days after World War II, uh, other countries came to buy American products because we made the best. Now we make everything cheap and we charge too much for it. Uh, and that's why people are going to other countries to, to buy their products. And yes, I, I don't think that the tariffs are a good idea uh, right now until we can be sure that domestic demand can be met with a domestic supply. Well, the U.S. has added uh, huge tariffs on Canadian softwood, which is greatly needed in Florida and uh, for other hurricane reconstruction. It's just made it a lot more expensive. Yeah, everything seems to be done to benefit the corporations and, and the war machine. Uh, and it's just becoming very apparent that government corporations are totally unconcerned with what helps ordinary people achieve a better lifestyle. Will the Trump tax cuts help the average guy? So far, most middle-class homes have not seen an increase in uh, their paycheck. Uh, the ultra-wealthy corporations and individuals really got the lion's share of the benefit, uh, and the military got a huge boost. That's Trump's priorities, his, his fellow billionaires, and, uh, you know, fueling the war machine. Did giving extra money to the military cost uh, the American safety net for seniors? 
Uh, yeah, there were cuts to Medicaid to make up for some of this, uh, but uh, the reality is that anything additional that went to the military had to come out of someplace else. And so uh, 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 funding for non-military projects obviously was slashed across the board. NASA's budget has been cut. Uh, the uh, uh, spirit of the, uh, the rover opportunity uh, did survive this last Martian winter, but NASA may have to shut it down because they don't have the money to keep the, the con, uh, control room operating. In Canada, there's now a class action lawsuit against Apple for slowing down older iPhones. Do you see the same thing happening in the U.S., and do you think such a lawsuit is the suitable thing to do? I, I absolutely agree it's the suitable thing to do here. Uh, this is almost a repeat of what happened when the first iPods came on out, where Apple built these units so that the battery could not be replaced, and their attitude was when the battery dies, you buy a new iPod. There'll be a new hipper version anyway. Even today, the iPhones and iPads, you cannot replace the battery. And unless you send it uh, into uh, an approved dealer, which, of course, is going to cost a lot of money. Uh, but most people are pretty much convinced that what was going on uh, was not, not an attempt to save the battery performance, but to convince people their older phones were so much slower that it was time to get a new one. And in a healthy economy where people have got disposable uh, incomes, you can get away with that kind of thing, uh, but not in this economy. People are handing on, uh, hanging on to appliances as long as they can. There's talk about right-to-repair laws in many states uh, where it will be illegal to sell any products that the consumer cannot open up and replace parts on themselves. Uh, Apple is not doing very well right now. The iWatch has never really sold all that many units. Apparently, expectations for the iPhone 10 have already been cut in half. And now you have your lawsuit, plus I think there's another one down here in the U.S. over this battery issue. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. A work program is planned for our Finland property that contains diamond-bearing kimberlite. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ADD, and the Frankfurt Exchange, symbol 82A1. Please visit our website at arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. I'm Brian Fowler, President of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted historic engineer gold mine in the Atlan District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, did the U.S. Supreme Court rule that the so-called dreamers get to stay? Unfortunately, yes, they did, and uh, I, I disagree with that. Uh, they shouldn't have been here in the first place, uh, and I know a lot of people say, well, it's unfair, their parents brought them here, it wasn't their choice. We should have been stopping the parents and the kids right there at the border, uh, but we've had this, this liberal idea of just opening up uh, our country's borders so that anybody can come on in, and the liberals are actually out there saying that everybody has a right to come to the United States of America, and no, they do not. Uh, no nation has a totally wide open border policy right now except the United States and, of course, the European Union. And the, the problem is our infrastructure is not growing uh, to, to match the needs of the growing population, which, which is growing rapidly from all this influx of people. Uh, and most of them don't have skills that will allow them to get jobs. Uh, we have a huge uh, unemployed population of legal American citizens who have not been able to find jobs for months or weeks. And... I think people supported Donald Trump because he wanted to do this, make America first uh, and take care of our nation. Uh, and instead, we're still seeing this globalist George Soros uh, vision uh, is still controlling our, our, our border policy. Well, in Canada, we have a lot of people upset that Canada still spends millions and millions on foreign aid, and yet we have people sleeping in doorways. Yeah, we've got exactly the same situation here. These refugees from other countries are being treated better by our government than our own citizens and our own veterans. And uh, all we're seeing, I mean, we've got a huge homeless problem all over this country. We've got 8,000 homeless on this island alone, and we're a tiny little island. And all the government and the police seem able to do uh, is to, to just, you know, make sure the tourists don't see them. That's, that seems to be the policy. Uh, you know, any assistance or help for the hungry and homeless 
is coming uh, through various private uh, uh, charities, churches, and so forth and so on. Claire and I are involved in a couple of those. Uh, but it's like decades of government bad policy have created this economic mess, and now the political leader's attitude seems to be, well, we just want it all to go away. We want to go on pretending that everything is fine with the economy because we can't actually fix it. And it looks like they're going to try and get World War III going as a distraction so that they have something to blame. Because even top experts at like Goldman Sachs are saying, we're going to see a major event in this country economically. And if it happens before the U.S. government gets a major war going, uh, then we, the American people, are going to point the finger of blame where it richly deserves to go, Wall Street and Washington, D.C. But if they can get the war going, then their answer to any criticisms about how they've handled the economy is going to be, well, you know, it's not our fault. It's those gosh darn Russians and those gosh darn Chinese uh, and they caused this mess, and it's really uh, the war, and we're just going to have to deal with it. Where do you see that war breaking out? There are several flashpoints where it could happen. Syria is number one on the top of the list. You've got aircraft from six different countries flying over the skies and already starting to shoot each other down. Uh, Israel launched five more missiles toward Damascus today. They were all shot down, fortunately. You've got Turkey effectively invading Syrian soil, uh, supposedly to get the Kurds. Now, the U.N., Security Council did pass a resolution for a 30-day ceasefire for humanitarian reasons, but Erdogan is already out there saying that uh, that has no bearing on his campaign against the Kurds, and Putin is already saying uh, it, it doesn't affect our, our campaign against the terrorist groups. So there, there's really not going to be much of a reduction uh, in the fighting in Syria. Then you have Israel, which looks like they're going to lash out at Lebanon, you have Afghanistan, which is now being bombed so heavily by the United States. The U.S. is actually starting to run out of bombs. And then, of course, there's the North Korean situation. And despite the obvious move toward detente and reunification that we saw at the Olympics, uh, Trump is back on the war path, warning that if North Korea does not disarm, it's going to be very bad for the world, which sounds like a threat. He's threatening to, to basically bring war to the world uh, if uh, North Korea doesn't do as they're told. Well, if the U.S. is running out of bombs in Afghanistan, how are they going to bomb North Korea? Uh, I'm sure they've already got the, all the various munition factories working overtime, but they did have to ship uh, a bunch of uh, dumb bombs, uh, guided munitions, and, and so forth from out here in the Pacific Fleet uh, to send to Afghanistan. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after this. I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent-pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com, or phone us at 604-924-5504. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. The Florida school shooting, we're seeing all kinds of political spin on it now. We're being told that some police officers were ordered not to go into the building. Anything behind that? Well, more and more people on the independent media are saying this is just another one of these manufactured false flag attacks uh, to try and trick Americans into surrendering their Second Amendment rights. There's always the focus on the AR-15 uh, assault rifle. But the reality is the only place the AR-15 is being used is at these staged propaganda events. Real, crime, real criminals don't use an AR-15 for crimes. Uh, you know, they'll use a handgun. Nobody walks into a convenience store to rob it with an AR-15. But the government wants these guns because in the hands of an enraged American people, it's going to make it seriously difficult for the U.S. government to carry out any other abuses uh, of our rights that they may have, have planned. So, uh, again, we've got all the elements uh, uh, of a false flag shooting, uh, predated news stories appearing on the web, they're already going to tear down uh, the crime scene, uh, missing security uh, videos. Uh, and we've had a lot of teachers come forward to say that, yes, there was an active shooter drill that very day, that very time. They, they thought that when they started hearing the gunshots, they thought it was just blanks. 
uh, and we've had this one student who says she was talking with the suspected shooter, the Hughes shooter, uh, Nicholas Cruz, as the shooting broke out on the other side of campus. So a lot of people are going public, multiple shooters. One of the teachers uh, there actually saw one of the shooters and said the shooter was in all full military uh, gear, uh, body armor, helmet, face mask, uh, and, and didn't even recognize the style of rifle being used. So, uh, again, there are reasons to seriously doubt the official story on this. And, of course, it's not working. NRA memberships are now up. Uh, people all across the country are flocking to gun stores to buy guns. And this happens every time the liberals try one of these gun grab uh, circuses. It always backfires on them. Uh, several car rental companies have ended their relationship with the NRA. Is that practical? Well, it's more symbolic than anything, and it's already triggered a call for boycotting these companies by NRA members. So how much uh, fiscal impact it will have is rather hard to say. But uh, the NRA is saying they're all basically being cowards. They're caving into liberal pressure, uh, which is exactly what's going on here. Uh, but we're seeing a major, major push for gun control. Apparently, a federal appeals court in Maryland has upheld the legality of Maryland's draconian gun limitation uh, law. And I hope it goes to the Supreme Court because uh, there was a previous decision, United States versus Miller, which says the Second Amendment reserves to the American people the same types of weapons carried by the uniform military. Now, we're not talking nuclear bombs and stinging missiles. We're talking what a regular soldier would have on their person, which would be their battle rifle, maybe a sidearm, uh, and uh, so forth and so on, but equal in capacity uh, and force to those arms. Uh, and that was exactly what the Founding Fathers intended with the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is not about hunting. It's not about target shooting. It is about giving the states the means to resist aggression by a central government. Mm -hmm. Our Twitter and YouTube censoring content in the run-up to the 2018 midterm elections. Well, they're censoring content right now, certainly trying to keep uh, uh, people from expressing doubt over what happened in Parkland, Florida. They've deleted several of my videos off of my radio show's video channel. Uh, they've been, uh, we had a caller into the show today saying that he saw entire streams of tweets just vanish instantaneously. So the censorship is now out there in the open. There's actually been a lawsuit filed against Twitter uh, to basically uh, say uh, out in California, uh, there is a legal doctrine. Uh, that uh, public services are serving as public forums and the First Amendment does apply. Uh, but uh, it, there, there's a war between the corporate media and the independent media. They're clearly running scared. And I don't know why they thought they could get away with this again after the collapse of the Mandalay Bay story. I was just going to ask, what's the latest on Vegas? Again, I haven't seen any correlation on the bullets recovered from victims from the coroner and the type of weapons that the so-called shooter used. Uh, no, there doesn't seem to be, and uh, again, despite a court order, much of the information about the autopsies and the uh, 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 the coroner's reports is still being withheld. Does the setting up of paywalls for fake news give people the illusion it's not fake? Um, I don't know if that would be the case. I think people are discovering what's fake and what's not by simply looking at the content and deciding for themselves. And again, we have a corporate media that has a long track record of these deceptions. And uh, uh, the CEO of Fox is now calling for censorship of the uh, independent media, and he admits it's all about the money. They're losing audience to the independent media, and they, they, want, to, uh, uh, they want to try and make corporate media mandatory. They want to get the American people back to watching corporate media and only corporate media. Can the Republicans overcome the voting machines in 2018? That is very much up in the air. One of the problems is we don't know uh, the real number of uh, illegal immigrants inside the country. We keep hearing the number 12 million, 12 million, 12 million, but we've been hearing that for months. And we know that more illegals are pouring over the border every single day. And they're all going to vote Democratic, and they're being allowed to vote Democratic. In fact, up in Chicago, Mayor Rahm Emanuel is literally issuing a city ID to undocumented migrants, illegal immigrants, and declaring... It is valid for registering to vote and to vote, except that under the law, only citizens can vote. But they're relying on these millions and millions of illegal immigrants who are going to vote Democratic because they believe uh, they're going to get all kinds of free stuff, uh, and, and they're going to steal the election that way. Senator Dianne Feinstein failed to get the official Democratic Party 
uh, endorsement at their convention in California. Does that show the Democrat Party splitting, or they just don't like her? I think it's more that they don't like her and the fact that there are some of these uh, fossils in Congress who are reflecting badly on the respective parties. I know there's a lot of Democrats uh, who want uh, uh, Feinstein to go. Uh, they want somebody younger. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on Maxine Water to maybe bow on out. And uh, we might see some interesting stuff going on in this November's elections. But uh, unless Donald Trump really starts cracking down hard on this issue of fraudulent election, uh, he, he, he's going to lose the Congress this November, and he certainly will not win a second term in 2020. Could the two-party system in America be ending? Uh, yeah, it might. I mean, the two-party system is actually enforced by laws. There are special laws that grant certain uh, privileges and benefits to the two traditional parties and make it very difficult for a third party to take off. But it would be possible if we had the same kind of motivation uh, that we saw in 2016 to get Trump in past Hillary Clinton, there would be enough force to form a third party. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people had said that if the GOP succeeded in kicking Donald Trump out of uh, the primaries, because they were rigging their primaries as much as the Democrats were, uh, that uh, he would form a third party. And I certainly would have supported him on that one. What's the newly released Democrat memo? Well, it's uh, it's kind of backfired. I mean, it actually did confirm that this uh, dossier, this now discredited dossier on Donald Trump, uh, was shown to the FISA court by both FBI and Department of Justice to obtain their warrants, uh, and the FISA court was not informed that this document was the product of a political uh, writer hired by the Hillary campaign. Will tougher sanctions against North Korea work? And did the Olympics do a good job of easing tensions there? Well, the Olympics did a wonderful job of easing tensions, and Mike Pence came off uh, looking uh, a bit snobbish because uh, during the uh, uh, opening ceremonies, the, the team for Korea, a uh, United Korea, as the hosting team, came onto the field and Mike Pence refused to stand. So uh, basically, yeah, the, the, the Olympics look like there might actually be a hope to avoid this war, uh, but Trump keeps pushing and pushing. Now, this latest round of sanctions against Korea uh, is not approved by the United Nations Security Council. It's just a unilateral declaration against North Korea and basically amounts to a naval blockade. And obviously, North Korea is very upset about it. China has absolutely denounced uh, these unilateral sanctions, which means China is going to continue to support North Korea. Is China an economic powerhouse today because of the World Trade Organization? Uh, China is having some economic difficulties, but the reason they're an economic superpower is they make things to sell. They're a manufacturing powerhouse, and that's really what has brought them up to the status that they are right now. They, they make a lot of things. Even the iPhone is made uh, in uh, China. China can make things the U.S. has forgotten how to do, and that's how you build a nation's wealth. You don't just try and shake the money back and forth and hope it'll grow, which is, seems to be what they do in Wall Street. Could the upcoming elections in Italy speed up the end of the European Union? They very well might. The most favorite candidate out there is uh, uh, saying he's already going to deport half a million of these refugees uh, if, if he wins uh, the, uh, the election. That's uh, Salvini. And he's going to deport 500,000 out of the 100,000 migrants in Italy. This is probably going to lead to a conflict with Brussels. And, of course, Brussels is already in conflict with both Poland and Hungary. And Soros is out there with all of his money trying to glue his little dream of a one-world government back together. Why are American farmers killing themselves? They're going broke. Uh, the, uh, they're, they're going broke uh, they, because of the economy. Uh, they're not uh, because of the, uh, uh, the sanctions. They're not able to sell their product uh, because of GMOs. A lot of countries are refusing to buy GMO products right now, Russia and China being two of them. And uh, there was a story not too long ago about how uh, there were these farmers in uh, Oregon who grew what they thought was GMO-free corn, and they spent the money to ship it to China. China tested it and said, no, this is contaminated, and they sent it right on back. And it, it's almost a parallel to what happened in India uh, back when the government mandated the transition to BT cotton plant. And so all these farmers obediently got these GMO cotton seeds, and it turned out that the uh, BT cotton was much less resistant to uh, uh, dryness 
than the natural variety. And so the plants all died, the, the cotton wasn't harvested, and something like a quarter of a million farmers committed suicide. Are genetically engineered viruses likely to be used to target populations? Uh, anything is possible. The U.S. is still continuing to uh, create uh, these engineered viruses, bacteria, all in violation of the United Nations Convention on Biological Weapons. Everybody signed an agreement saying, you know, these are dangerous, especially if they mutate. And most of the countries kept their promises and destroyed their biological weapons arsenals. The U.S. did not and persists in continuing to create new ones. I hope they don't drop a test tube. Are mega drones that can carry passengers an accident waiting to happen? It depends, obviously, on how they're engineered. I, I think the downside for these things is that a lot of passengers are not going to be very comfortable on a plane that does not have a human flight crew. And, of course, we see two different philosophies, Airbus that defers to the computer and <clears throat> Boeing that defers to the pilot in, in times of trouble. It seems to me I've seen so many Mayday shows that we get on our uh, one of our TV channels that having good pilots is better than a good computer. Well, you want to have good both, uh, and you want the computers to basically do what the computers do, but computers can break down. Accidents can happen, uh, and at that point, you need a superbly trained human crew to basically take over and fly the aircraft by the seat of their pants. And we've seen several accidents that have happened because the crew is so reliant on the computer. When it goes down or doesn't get the right signals, they don't know what to do. They're not getting enough training on how to handle the aircraft when the computer goes down. And I understand that a lot of modern aircraft are almost impossible for real humans to fly in that uh, ever-going quest for more speed and more fuel economy. Uh, uh, they really do, uh, especially the Airbus, you got to have the computers to basically keep them going. Uh, but again, I, I don't think that this, this new super drone uh, uh, passenger ship, I don't think it's going to work. I, I'm going to think the passengers are still going to want to see a human crew on there. Well, we've had computers driving Vancouver's uh, rapid transit system since 1986. But of course there, if something goes wrong, the worst thing that happens is the train stops. Yes. You can't do that with an airplane. No, you can't. Michael, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. If you have any questions for Michael or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.